Meanwhile, John O'Connor, the uh, Republican Oklahoma Attorney General, kind enough to join us uh, this Saturday. General, thank you very much for taking the time. Is there common ground in your eyes, sir? Where would it be? Yeah, Neil, thank you. Thanks for uh, having me on board. First of all, let me say this. Uh, we thank the people around the country who have uh, given thoughts and prayers in support of the people here in Tulsa. Uh, I also want to thank law enforcement. They were at the scene within three minutes of the call. So, uh, so we appreciate their service. I think there is room for common ground, but I think we, uh, we need to look at where the real culprit is. The real culprit's not a gun. The real culprit is either criminals or people who either uh, long-term or temporarily are dealing with uh, depression or some type of mental illness. Those are the should only people that who be, shoot would, people. But should that come out, General, in a, in, a, in a background check? Apparently, the assailant here at Tulsa got the gun legally, so we don't have much more to go on than that unless you have new information you can share. So then the issue becomes, does something slip up in the background checks we do have? Well, I'm told that Mr. Lewis, the shooter, uh, would have passed a bath, uh, background check. So I don't think he had any significant or contributory criminal background or mental health history. Uh, so, so then you ask the question, well, how far do you have to go in background checks in terms of banning people from having guns? And so um, I, I know the people of Oklahoma, uh, the majority of the elected leaders anyway, uh, don't believe that the guns are the problem and support the Second Amendment. Uh, so but the, uh, I think that most Oklahomans are probably thinking that, that we uh, should increase our, our safety measures in schools and uh, hospitals and medical care facilities like we do courthouses. Uh, Oklahoma already bans guns in courthouses and jails and bars and uh, schools, colleges. So. So uh, there, are, there are measures we can take right now, Neil, for public safety, but we do need to look at mental health. That, that's, you know, we should train our people to detect mental health, even if it's temporary, even if, like in the case of this shooter, um, he got a surgery, he was not uh, satisfied with the pain management, apparently, and, uh, and just had an aberrant response. Think of the millions of people who've had surgery who uh, have not been happy with the pain response, but have, have made it through it and haven't gone and gotten a gun and shot a couple of doctors and some PAs and a receptionist. Yeah, that is a very unique situation, but a mildly sir, to your point. I am wondering, though, what, what they're cooking up on Capitol Hill uh, and where they seem to be finding agreement, General, is on this notion of a waiting period if you have doubts or concerns. Uh, not that guns would be denied, but if there are questions, they would be delayed. What do you think of that? Well, uh, obviously, it makes sense to delay if you have some indication that this is going to be used in a crime or that the person who's applying is, is dealing with some type of mental situation. But how would you have known this? Um, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's drawing the line that is going to be very difficult. It almost seems like we would get to the point where somebody's going to say, if we're afraid of somebody or if we're alarmed at somebody or if somebody disagrees with us, then they're on the watch list. And uh, I just don't know where you uh, if you look at the present or recent shooters, it, it seems like their situations arose spontaneously and and situationally. And I don't know how you detect that. Sir, we're learning right now that the Ohio governor and in Ohio in general are poised to right now recommend arming teachers in schools. Very different incident than the Tulsa hospital shooting uh, you and your uh, constituents had to deal with. Uh, but what do you make of that, putting arms uh, in, in the hands of people who could defend themselves when such a shooting occurs? Well, I'd say, first of all, we have to deal with public safety. So I would absolutely be doing that, and I'd be doing it right now. And I'd probably go to the point of having a security person at the front desk, and I'd also have uh, security where you have to get buzzed in. And I would also look at our windows and see if they if they can be breached and, and our doors. Uh, so public safety is number one, and public safety has to be dealt with right now. And, uh, and we need to allocate the funds to do that. All right. Separately, uh, again, this doesn't quite relate to what happened tragically in your state, sir, but New York, uh, at least the state legislature, has already moved uh, 
to, to ban assault weapons to those under the age of 21. What do you think of that? Well, first of all, just about everything that New York does, Oklahomans are going to want to do the opposite. Uh, so, so, and as your prior reporter just said, you know, banning assault weapons looks like it's a big action, but it really isn't a big impact. So we, you know, we, we're going to dance around all this, Neil, for a long time. But the fact is, it's criminals and people with some type of either long-term or temporary mental uh, illness or depression. That's the culprit. Only those people shoot people outside of our military. Uh, do we so, make it easier uh, on them? Do we make it easier on them, sir, if, we, if there are so many guns? We have more guns than we do people in this country. And there might be a point at which you can say, all right, there's a bit of a trade-off on things that we Republicans and uh, Second Amendment advocates want and those who want to push that too far. Uh, is there a middle ground on that to say, well, all right, there is a limit? Yeah, so Neil, you know, in America, we discuss things, and I think, I think always we should have these discussions and see where would the outcome uh, exceed the value of uh, the detriment of the imposition of a restriction. So, so a, a discussion on this would be a good idea, but, uh, but again, we have to. We we can't dance around the the topic of we, we need to train people to detect mental illness or depression. We need to we need to have easier ways to get people into uh, treatment and care quickly. We need to uh, have easier ways to report this to mental health. Uh, I mean, honestly, it's just mental health has been the stepchild of physical health forever. And, uh, and we're realizing now that, that every once in a while, somebody with a mental health issue uh, erupts. And, uh, and the question is, uh, in my opinion, Neil, we should be devoting attention to that. All right. Attorney General John O'Connor, thank you very much. We'll see what happens next. Uh, thank you for joining us on a weekend thank you. here.